I never want to become the negativity guy who calls out other people, uh, nor do I ever want to become like the contrarian guy who just says things because they go against the mainstream or something. Um, but at the same time, I do want to be the person who, um, I don't want to say calls out, but basically like I, I points out the obvious or common sense or whatever you want to call it, or uh, provides good information or provides strong counterpoints or you know some other thing can fit in there. Uh, and so I recognize that what I'm about to talk about is going to be extremely unpopular because this is um, it's a big movement in uh, fitness. These people stick together like a cult, uh, which I don't think you should ever do. Uh, it's even worse with diets and nutrition. Um, I'm not anti-keto or anti-vegan or anything, but I am anti these diet cliques, diet cults, diet whatever you want to call it. Like these people, oh, I'm vegan and I hate anyone who isn't. I'm keto and I hate anyone who isn't. And it's just like, dude, like it's, it's just food. I'm carnivore. Whatever. Moral superiority over what you eat. Anyways, the same thing happens, though, in training, oddly enough. Uh, you know, I'm a power lifter. I hate everyone else. I'm a crossfitter. I hate everyone else. You know, I'm a weight lifter. I hate everyone else. So, whatever. Um, so I'm going to attack science-based people right now. Science-based fitness, science-based nutrition, science-based whatever. Um, and now I've probably got a million people clicking the dislike button already. But I have a point to make, and uh, hear me out. If um, you know, if you disagree, I hope that you at least listen, and um, then you can go ahead and tell me in the comments why you think I'm wrong. The problem with science-based and um, exercise science, exercise physiology, all these things like that, is that the science is pretty much useless when in, we start getting into actually working with athletes. The issue here is that you can take a look at any of these studies, and the majority of the time, the studies are on untrained college males. Okay, so we got untrained guys between 18 and 22. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand why this is. This is what you have available to work with. Like, that's the reality of doing research. I've done research. That's who you have available to you to do the research on. Like, it's not like the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to volunteer to you. Hey, actually, we pay these athletes millions of dollars, and their careers absolutely rely on high-quality strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and experiment on them? Not going to happen. <laughs> like, no one's going to turn to you and be like, Oh, yeah, uh, you know, we pay Tom Brady millions of dollars. Of course you can just experiment with this program and try random shit. See if it works. So the point being that I actually I, I understand both sides of this equation. I realize that your options are college-aged, untrained males. You're not going to have someone come to you and be like, "Yes, you can run an experiment on the United States Olympic gymnastics team." No one's ever going to let you do that. Uh, no one's ever going to come to you and be like, "You know what? Like, why don't you go ahead and do your experiment on the LA Lakers?" not going to happen. So I respect that. And I'm, I, I, that's not a criticism of the people who are science-based. That's not a criticism of science. That's just the reality of doing research. That's who you have available for your subjects. But you can see how this immediately creates a problem. So you have these untrained college males. And we all know about newbie gains. And of course, you also have this age range of 18 to 22 males. So presumably they're going to be healthy and high testosterone levels and you know, probably don't have a lot of training age uh, since they're untrained. And so then they also don't have joint issues and mobility issues or past injuries, etc. Um, if they do, they're probably pretty minor. So suddenly these things, it's, you can see why this you can't apply this. Um, so I worked with an athlete who went on to set a world record in the deadlift. Okay we had to deal with a million different things. Like, it was like, well, he tore his bicep once and had to have it reattached, and, you know, he's had his knee, uh, you know, repaired twice, and, you know, he's got a fusion at, you know, L1, L2, and, 
yeah, so, you know, he's got, he's got really bad hips. His hips are just totally wrecked from all the heavy squatting and, you know, it, like, yeah. Suddenly you can't just follow some program that's science-based and just apply it to that guy. Um, it's also a guy who's been training for longer than most of those college-age athletes have been alive. This guy's got, like, 25 years of training in. Like, he started training at a very young age. Um, he's an elite-level lifter. He's not untrained. So, like, we can't just follow some science-based program. In fact, we can't even follow percentages. Like, I don't know if you guys realize this, and I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. Um, I assume some of you do understand this. Let's say you have a 1,000-pound squat you're not going to come in and do a 5x5 five five at 80%. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. If you do, um, you're superhuman. But you're not going to squat 800 pounds for a 5x5. Five five. So similarly, um, you know, when someone has a deadlift of 800 pounds, like we're not going to do you know, a top set of 5 at 80%. It's just not happening. Now, don't get me wrong, if you have a hundred kilo, I just like hundreds, so that's why I said pounds, a thousand pounds. Now we're going to go to kilos. If you have a hundred kilo back squat, then you could probably do a five by five by 80 kilos. Um, I would think that you could. I'd be surprised if you couldn't, but some people are very, very fast twitch, and so they burn out after like two or three reps. Uh, in any case, you can see my point, though. Like, whenever your, your max is 225, you can... You can do a 5x5 five five at 8%. When your max squat is 1,000 pounds, you're not going to be doing a 5x5 five five at 80%. It's just not going to happen. And so even the percentages break down. So when we look at these different programs and we look at people who are like, I'm science-based, that's cool. And it's interesting. And you can still gain something from it. But when it comes to actually working with athletes, when it comes to actually coaching athletes, I mean... I've never seen an isokinetic knee extension machine in any of the gyms I've ever been in. And I've been in NCAA D1 facilities, and I've been in professional facilities for both hockey and football. Oh, and baseball, actually. Um, there's no isokinetic knee extension machine. I've seen those at physical therapy. But I've never seen one in any of the training rooms. So whenever people do a study on isokinetic knee extensions, I'm like, this is not really going to apply very well to exercise science and making people faster and stronger. So there are some issues there. Additionally, uh, I would go on to say that you can even apply this to supplements. Uh, you'll see a supplement, and it's like, look at this supplement. We did a study on untrained college males, and they gained you know, eight pounds of muscle. It's like, oh, okay. And then I look at how you did your DEXA, and it's like, all right, so they were carb depleted. You took the DEXA, and then you give them the supplement for a few weeks, and then you give them a whole bunch of water and carbs, and oh, and then we run another DEXA, and it's like, wow, look how much weight they gained. And it's like, okay. Sure. I'm, I've been very disappointed in supplements. They never deliver nearly what research says they do. That's why I don't waste money on a lot of things. Um, well, even if something did work, I wouldn't waste money on it because I, I feel like a 1% gain or a 2% gain is not worth me spending 50 bucks a month on something. Uh, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Uh, if I'm going to spend 50 bucks, I'm buying 50 bucks worth of steak. I'm, I'm going to eat something I enjoy eating. Uh, I'm not going to buy some powder that tastes... I don't know. I know it says it's blueberry. I know it says it's watermelon. It tastes like cough syrup. But in any case, I don't think that you make these huge gains off of supplements either. And so that's why I'm sitting here telling you the science-based stuff, it gets cool. Take it for what it's worth. Um, but when you're actually working with athletes, a lot of this stuff just doesn't transfer because working with a 35-year-old guy who is at the top of his career is nothing like working with an 18-year-old guy who's completely untrained. And so that's why I think that science-based fitness um, often fails to deliver results.